welcome to another episode of Read It With Whiskey. Today, we are talking with Trinity Lem. Trinity Lem is from a small town in Illinois, and after she graduated high school in 2019, she went to Western Michigan University. She is studying both business and dance and plans to maintain a writing career on the side while she's in school. And when she's not writing, she enjoys dancing, spending time with her friends and family, and watching scary movies, as well as scrapbooking. I love another scrapbooker. (laughs) Today, we are going to be talking about Trinity's book, Forever Burn. Forever Burn is a young adult contemporary romance, and there's actually a book too coming out next week on April 14th. So Trinity will give you all of the information on how to find her books after the episode, so stay tuned. Welcome to Read It With Whiskey, an interview podcast highlighting self-published authors. I am your host, Laura Gentinen. The purpose behind this podcast is to help authors grow their audience while also introducing readers to their new favorite authors. Let's get to know the person behind the page. Sit back, sip some whiskey, and lean in to these self-published authors. And how about a little Laura J Live update? So I'm actually recording this way before this episode's actually going out. So I am sitting about mid-March right now, but at the beginning of April, me and Brian are going to be down in Florida for his cousin's wedding. Congratulations to Jeff and Ashley. So happy for you, and I'm sure we had a really good time. (laughs) Um, So that is where I was this past weekend as you're listening to this. So I decided I would record this episode prior to, that way I knew that this information would get to you. At the point of this episode airing, I should also have, um, hopefully, a couple thousand words written in book two of the Shockwave series. So it is April 6th at the day of this episode um, releasing. So hopefully, yeah, at least 6,000. I'm hoping for more, but you never know how much you can get done while traveling. And I really don't think I'm going to have much writing time because we're going to be at the beach. It's April. We're going to be in Florida. (laughs) All right, so I'm not going to have too much of an update for you for Laura J Live because I'm not actually living with you. I'm from the past. So next week, we will have a little bit more of an update. But for now, let's just jump into this episode with Trinity. Hello, Trinity, and welcome to Read It With Whiskey. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm good. And I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, You are one of the younger of my authors. And so I was excited to have you in the show to show other self-published authors what these younger people are doing right now to write a book at um, 19. Were you 19 when this book came out, Forever Burn? Um, I wrote it when I was 18. It ended up coming out when I had turned 19. So yes. So cool. So cool. And we'll dive into um, a few other things around the other works that you have as well. But first of all, um, just so then our audience knows, why did you want to become a writer? Why did you decide, okay, I'm going to be an author? Well, when I was younger, I'd say probably like 12, 13, I was very, very into reading. I was reading a different book every single day and just absolutely loved it. Um, When I turned 14, I started writing poetry. So that's kind of where I started off. And when I turned 16, I kind of took all of my poems, made a poetry collection, published that. But I had always wanted to jump into fiction as well. So it wasn't until I was like 18 that I finally decided to give it a try. And I love it. And I'm so excited that you started young because Mm -hmm. I didn't publish my first book until I was, I think I was 27. And so I'm like, oh, you've got... (laughs) nearly 10 years. And then we're, when you're my age, you're going to be so much further than I am. So I'm just so excited that you started young. And so you have your book of poetry and that one's called fingerprints, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and then we have forever burn, which we're going to talk about today. That's the book I read. And what other projects have you been working on? What other books are you working on? Um, I just finished forever frozen, which is the sequel to forever burn. Um, that will be coming out next month. So I'm very excited about that. And right now I'm about a hundred or so pages into my next project, but I haven't announced that one yet. So Ooh. I can't really say anything. So exciting. Okay. We'll, we'll stay on pins and needles for that one. That's all right. Um, so you've got projects going and you, you don't plan on stopping anytime soon, which is exciting. No. 
Um, so, but you're not a full-time author, you're in school. So what do you do? What is your regular day-to-day look like? Um, very, very busy. <laughs> um, I finally decided to quit my job because everything was just so much. So right now I'm just a full-time student, part-time author. I'm still trying to juggle my social life and my sorority life and all of that different stuff, just normal college life stuff. So yeah, it's definitely a handful, but definitely worth it. Yes. I was in the, in the sorority life as well. So I know how hectic that can be Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) all those events. Um, (laughs) but I, I bet you used some of that within your own story. So I bet it was beneficial in the long run. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit too. So, okay. So you have two books published, you have some more coming out. So tell us, why did you decide self-publishing was the route to go for you versus the traditional route? I originally was looking into traditional publishing, but when it came down to it, I just thought it was going to be so time consuming and I wanted to get my book into readers' hands as soon as possible. So I decided to just kind of go with self-publishing because I know it takes so long to get an agent and then a publisher and the whole process can take people years. So I was too impatient. (laughs) I'm the same way. And you, and you've got time. You can always go traditional later on if you want to. It's not like you have to do one or the other. There's so many authors who are hybrid now. Um, But speaking of getting your books into other people's hands, how did it feel when you had it in your hands the first time? Absolutely amazing. There's no better feeling. And I thought like the best feeling was when I first held fingerprints for the first time, Mm -hmm. but somehow forever burn was just even better. Like I cannot even begin to describe how amazing it was. (laughs) It's like laughing and crying, freaking out, but just feeling so complete. (laughs) It's like your own baby in book form. So (laughs) exactly. So speaking of your book, baby, so tell our listeners what is forever burn about and where did that inspiration come from? So forever burn is a YA contemporary romance. Um, more so like an upper YA to NA type feel. Um, It takes place at a college. Our main protagonist is Tatum Everly, who is a freshman at Western Michigan University, which I based off of my own school because Mm -hmm. why not? Um, And she struggles from complex post-traumatic stress disorder due to a past abusive relationship that was very emotionally and psychologically abusive. So she's kind of struggling with that. She's learning how to maintain her symptoms and get a grip on her disorder. And that's when she meets Axel Byrne at a fraternity party, who is notorious for a lot of different things. (laughs) He has a very bad reputation. And right away, she kind of shies away from him. She wants nothing to do with him. And slowly yet surely, they kind of fall together. And it's this whole big story where (laughs) there's a lot of stuff going on. So yes, that's pretty much the gist. There's a lot that they, that they go through together. And um, it's just so entertaining to see the different situations that they get put into and see what she decides to do for herself and what he does. And I just, I don't want to give away any spoilers because I want everyone to buy your book. (laughs) So we're not going to give away spoilers. (laughs) If you want to know all the details, you got to buy the book. Um, So this was inspired from personal situations. So complex post-traumatic stress disorder, that's a mouthful. Um, so how much of that was personal situations put into the book and was that difficult for you to kind of relive some of those symptoms maybe while you were writing? Um, yeah, pretty much. I kind of based Tatum's past off of my own. So it definitely, a lot of parts were very difficult to write, but I knew it was kind of just a story that had to be told. And my main focus was kind of creating a a relationship between Tatum and Axel that was healthy and comparing it directly to a relationship that's toxic and unhealthy. Because when you're in those types of situations, you don't always realize that you're in them. Right. So I think it's very important, especially for younger readers, young adults to kind of get that comparison and understand it for their own sake. Yeah. I think that's a really important lesson for people to learn. And, and now having had this situation in your own life, you're able to Mm -hmm. use that to help so many other people who may be in an exact situation, but they don't realize that it's unhealthy. 
Um, right. And so this can kind of shine the light on that for them. If they're like, I'm not quite sure if they pick up this book, then they're going to know <laughs> because yeah. there's, there's so many details and it was, it was well written on how, how you explained the whole situation and her internal feelings and, and all of that. It's just very powerful. Um, so y- you based her a little bit on your own self and your situations. Yes. Were there any characters that were based on personal friends, family, or any of your classmates, anything like that? Yes. So Claire and Gianna, who are two of Tatum's best friends, are based off of two of my friends here that I met at college freshman year last year, Um, Chloe and Gia. So they are also cousins. So that's kind of how that came about. But I absolutely love them. They're two of my closest friends and they are amazing. Um, Tatum's sisters, Bryn, Kendall and Macy, are based off of my own sisters because I have three sisters. Um, when my brother found out that he wasn't in it, he was really mad at me. So, <laughs> oh, no. but I just felt like, <laughs> I felt like four siblings was just too much. So I just stuck with the sisters. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I love, <laughs> I love learning those little things from authors because you never know how much of themselves they put into the book. And so you can build your own, the characters relationships with her sisters around what you experience with your own sisters. And it's a great yes. way to, to write through your own experience. Um, so that's really exciting to hear. So, okay. What was your, I, I always like asking people this because everyone has different answers. Some people say, mm-hmm. I like writing all the characters. Some people say, I really hated writing this one or that one. So did you have a character that you preferred to write and you were excited to write about them more so versus another character? Definitely Axel. Yeah. (laughs) I just, I love Axel so much. And I think a lot of people will be very excited to read Forever Frozen because the point of view switches between Tatum and Axel. I didn't know this. Oh, I'm so excited. (laughs) So I didn't, I didn't do that in the first one. I, I kind of was a little scared too, since it was my first book. I didn't want to do too much when I didn't really know what I was doing, you know? So yeah, but even in Forever Burn, just writing him was just always so exciting mm-hmm. because he's just like that person that everyone kind of wants in their life, you know, right. like as a reader or as a writer. So just being able to write him and create him like the way that I personally envision him was just always very exciting and entertaining. So he's your fantasy crush and you wrote a book about him. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, I love it. And now there's going to be someone out there be like, Trinity, it's, it's me. I'm Axel. They're going to read the book. And have you oh, had anything always, like that? I not necessarily where they like know that they remind me of him, but like, right. if I go out to like, wherever I go with a bunch of friends or something, and I see a guy that like even remotely looks like him, I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God. It's Axel. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's too funny. Oh, that's fun to hear. And I, I did not know that, um, forever frozen was going to be from his point of view. So that's really exciting to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're, I'm going to kind of talk about that in a little bit too. So there's so many strong themes within this book, a lot happens and, um, there's the CPTSD, young adult relationships, those types of themes. So what is it that you hope that your readers are going to get out of this book? Um, I think the main thing is that the whole healthy versus toxic relationships Mm -hmm. thing, I think it's just so very important. Um, Like I was saying earlier, like you don't always realize that things are toxic or that people are manipulative or like whatever it is that they're doing until you kind of see it from the outside. So I'm just hoping that being able to kind of read it, understand it and kind of connect all the dots will be able to help some people in some way. Mm -hmm. And not just that, but there have even been people who have reached out to me saying that, like, they didn't realize that, um, like, this symptom was part of, like, PTSD or this, like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, they're just learning a lot about the disorder itself and the symptoms that come along with it, which is also just very fulfilling Mm -hmm. as an author. And just with my disorder in general, it's always very fulfilling to be able to help someone in some type of way. 
Yeah. And you're being such a good role model to show them how brave you are to talk about it. And hopefully that'll help them talk to someone too, if they need help Mm -hmm. in those types of situations. And I'm all about women empowerment and having your independence and growing into like who you're supposed to be. And so there's so much of that within Tatum's story. And so the one thing that I was just like, just biting my lip, like, Oh, Tatum, pull it together. I think she forgives just a little bit too easy. You think so? I don't know. I don't I, know. I was I reading it and um, it was, I think it might just be because I'm in my late twenties and this book is geared for the young adult reader. Right. And so it might just be my own perspective. And so I think that was my biggest thing where I, w- I actually really enjoyed the fact that I disagreed with her on a few of her choices because it shows that like you did good on your job as a writer, because I Mm -hmm. had that emotional experience myself. Engaged. Yeah. Right. So I really, really enjoyed it. And so I was just frustrated with her a few times. I think she forgave just a little bit too easy, but that also stems from my own personality too. And where I come from. Um, So I'm, I'm really excited to hear book two is going to be from his side. So I think that'll help me with how I experienced book one to see his point of view in book two. Yeah. So book two, it switches off almost every chapter for the point of view. So you'll be able to see both, but um, you'll be able to really get into Axel's mind and understand why he is the way that he is, Mm -hmm. why he sees Tatum the way that he does. And I think that's the best part about having his point of view is you finally understand everything that goes through his head. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, this is going to be great. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, so what, if anything, um, moving forward, if people were in this situation, um, obviously you're, this isn't a nonfiction book, this is fiction, but do you have any advice for anybody who is going through a difficult relationship, like a number one advice that you would give out to them to maybe help them move forward or get out of that toxic relationship? I'd say first thing is pay attention, Um, especially when you were in it and you were living it. Every day is just kind of different. And Mm -hmm. you kind of reach a point where you wake up never knowing what side of that other person that you're going to get. They're either going to be the sweetest person you know, or they are going to make you cry and (laughs) just hate everything like you you need to pay attention to your own emotions Mm -hmm. um even if you can't recognize that what they are doing is wrong pay attention to what you feel and if you aren't 100 happy in the relationship and you know that pay attention to that and stick to your gut and do your absolute best to get out and i know that a lot of times it is very difficult for you to get out especially with those types of manipulative people that will try to guilt trip you into staying Mm -hmm. and whatnot but try to get out, try to find people to be able to talk to you about it with. Um, it's always very beneficial to have like a couple friends that even if they haven't like experienced it, that will just sit there and listen, mm-hmm. you know, just to anything you have to say. Um, therapy did help me quite a bit just because it's always beneficial to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. Right. So that also helps. But if you can, you need to kind of jump out of it, get as far away as possible and hit the block button because otherwise they're just going to keep coming back. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And you actually touched on my next question, um, with the friendships. So you personally, I'm assuming that you had friends there who, like you just suggested, have those friends who are going to be there to support you. And Tatum has those friends in her life as well. Um, so was that an important piece that you needed to have in the book? Tell us how that kind of evolved. Um, I think definitely at first I kind of like, didn't really know what I was doing because it was like my first Mm -hmm. book that I had ever written. And I kind of was just looking at my own life and the people around me. And since I was a freshman in college and the two closest people to me were Chloe and Gia, I kind of knew that they were very important to the story and important to not just me, but Tatum, obviously. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Having those, those, the strong support system is just so important. 
I'm Definitely. glad we got to talk about that a little bit. All right. So this wouldn't be read it with whiskey without talking about whiskey. However, you're underage. So we're not going to talk about your drinking habits. We're going to talk about your character's <laughs> drinking habits. So do you have any characters within your book who drink whiskey? And if so, what is their favorite whiskey? Um, they actually do. Tatum, she can throw down a couple whiskey shots. Oh yeah. She's so. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she is. She is. She's pretty impressive. Um, I'd say her favorite is kind of just like Tennessee honey, like normal kind of, you know, just a normal, nice honey, little whiskey vibe, you know, nice and smooth. Yeah. <laughs> nice and smooth. Yeah. I love that. All right, Trinity. Well, this was really, really fun. And I hope um, in the future we can bring you back for book two. Um, but go ahead, tell us where people can find you, where they can find your book and learn more about you. Um, you can find me on any of my social media platforms. I have a Facebook writing page. I have a author Instagram, which is just at Trinity Lem author. Um, I do have a website, which is trinitylem.com. You can find pretty much all my information on there. Um, you can buy signed copies through there, pre-order signed copies through there. And then as far as my books, you can find them on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, obviously my website, like I said, um, and a couple other different platforms with the eBooks and everything. So the pre-order is now up and available for Forever Frozen, and it will be coming out on April 14th. So I am very, very excited about that. Yay, I'm excited for you too. And thank you so much for being on the show. I had fun. Thank you. Talking with Trinity was so much fun, um, and I think it really helped that she was able to answer some of the questions that I had been mulling over in my head for quite some time. I'm not going to lie, that <laughs> that frustration I felt for Tatum was, it was mulling inside of me for so long. And so it really helped that Trinity was able to talk about her characters and give me more information. So then I knew exactly where Tatum was coming from, knew more of her side of things. And I'm really excited to dive into her next book, Forever Frozen, and learn more about Axel's side of everything. So it was actually really funny. After we got off of the Zoom call, I remembered there was a few things that I wanted to talk to her about that I had put on a little tiny post-it note that fell off the desk. <laughs> and so I couldn't find it. I couldn't remember these questions. So I reached out to Trinity afterwards and um, I got her answers. So the first question that I asked her was, was this planned to be more than one book or was it only one? Because Forever Burn, it could definitely be a standalone novel. It doesn't have to have another story behind it. However, I didn't know um, if that was actually planned or if there had always been an idea for two books. So I reached out to her. I said, was this always going to be two books? Like, tell me about it. And she said she didn't actually plan on making more than one book. She had left the door open at the end of book one. So then there could be potential in the future, but she didn't actually plan for book two to happen until it did. And I think that actually happens to a lot of us authors. We start writing and yes, we're going to do one book. It's going to be a standalone. This is going to be great. And then the characters start taking on a life of their own and they create new ideas in your head and you just got to let them run with it. And this is basically what she did. So I'm really excited to see what happens in book two. And the other part of the conversation that I was really looking forward to talking to her about was her merch. So Trinity actually came out with some merchandise to go along with Forever Burn and all of the information on how to find that merchandise is in the show notes. So go ahead and check in there. Um, there's a really cute beanie that you can get and there's some other little merchandise. So cool. It's definitely something that I've been thinking about for my own book series. And so I'm definitely going to have to pick her brain later about who she used for distribution and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that is really exciting. And she just actually launched the merchandise last month. So definitely stay tuned um, for more for that. And like I said, all the information is in the show notes. 
All right, that is all for this week. So next week, so you know what you have to look forward to, we are going to be talking to John, <laughs> John Donkowski. Don Donkowski. <laughs> I love when I mix up my words. All right, so we're going to talk to Don about her book, The Weight of Stars and Suns. And on the cover, her covers are so beautiful. You'll have to look her up on Instagram. But it says, a princess on the threshold of power, a rebel on the verge of revolution, and a planet on the edge of ruin. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so excited to talk to Dawn about her book. And you guys have to make sure to tune in next week. All right. I will talk to you then. Mm-hmm.